It's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. We're looking at you know the requests by the federal government urging the ECOWAS for support. Uh, the ECOWAS Regional Security Division on November the 11th in 2021 hosted an official lunch ceremony in Abuja, Nigeria, organized with the support of the ECOWAS Peace and Security Architecture and Operations, a regional project funded by the European Union and uh, the German Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development. The launch event was attended by key stakeholders and relevant partners of the ECOWAS Regional Security Division, including representatives of the European Union, the German Government High Commission of ECOWAS Member States and relevant ECOWAS Directorate. Well, the launch event was also attended virtually by the representatives from the African Security Sector Network, uh, the Geneva Center for Security Sector Governance, United Nations Development Program, Gambia, the African Union Commission, and the Special Representative of President of the ECOWAS Commission Office. The Gambia and the GIZ Please uh, Program in Gambia, beyond launching the SSRG policy framework, a comprehensive report first signed and endorsed in 2016, uh, that's in June, which promotes common security standards. The event also aimed at reiterating the commitment of ECOWAS towards the dissemination and implementation of the AS, I beg your pardon, the SSRG policy framework within member states. Furthermore, the launch ceremony served as a platform to commit to next step towards implementation of ECOWAS security sector reform and governance policy framework, which facilitates dialogue with partners as well as internally uh, within ECOWAS and future action for full implementation of security sector reform and governance policy framework, increasing of uh, the level of awareness in the public, the media and institution uh, it's active in the area of security sector reform and essentially raise the level of stakeholders engagement. Well, just recently, the federal government is also requesting uh, the support, asking that, you know, the ECO was push ahead with the support uh, for regional security. We have Paula Jimé, a global affairs analyst, who joins the conversation this morning. Paula Jimé, it's good to have you join us. Thank you for having me and good morning. Well, good morning to you. I mean, quickly, let's share your thoughts. The, the, the federal government is, you know, urging the support of uh, ECOWAS right here uh, with the security concerns. Do you think, and looking at the fact that, you know, in 2021, uh, there was a launch at the end of the day, uh, do you think that ECOWAS has what it takes to live up to his expectation or the request that's been put before it? So, um... As you know, ECOWAS, like um, every regional, um, they call them economic, um, regional economic community. And ECOWAS has been very, um, you know, is one of those that has been performing very well. Uh, one of the areas, they're not just, even though they were set up for economic reasons from their names, economic integration, but security, without uh, security, you cannot um, um, develop economically. So they are intertwined so because of that they have had them um, uh, to come up with some mechanisms some protocol um you know peace and security mechanisms they have um, uh, anti-terrorism uh, strategy in the gulf of guinea and now that um, um you know terrorists are all over the place so they have all that to um uh, be able to uh, take care of uh, secure the uh, the region but what, it, what happens is that, first of all, you say that a, mem a, a, a team or a club is as um, strong as its uh, weakest uh, member. That is why they have, they, no country can do it alone, so they have all come together to um, uh, put um, everything, pool resources, and be able to make sure that um, uh, the, uh, those that organize crimes or those that are behind them do not... Um, have um, any weak uh, link through which they can attack or operate from. So uh, it is there. But um, the uh, strange thing here is that Nigeria is a super, you know, a regional superpower and should be leading uh, this charge. Uh, one, some of them, the analysts will find it strange that Nigeria is, uh, you know, making this call uh, openly. There are channels. 
for instance, there is um, the um, defense um, uh, uh, ministers of uh, defense security uh, uh, committee, uh, uh, chief of staff, chief of uh, defense uh, uh, committee. There is also um, the police, regional police, West African police. These are where, you know, these things can be done, both at the bilateral level and multilateral, you know, concern because at times you have to deal with um, security, both um, with your uh, immediate neighbor, before you now talk about uh, regional, um, uh, at the regional level. So Nigeria should be leading this charge and not, um, uh, you know, create this impression like an elephant now calling on um, other uh, animals to, to do his, uh, his job. So it has to lead, provide the leadership and get other, other countries uh, behind it. Um, I don't think uh, Nigeria is saying that uh, the other countries are not pulling their weight. And if they are not, I think there are channels through which uh, this can be addressed. All right, uh, 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 Mr. Jibet, you know, this, this um, security sector reform uh, governance policy was launched uh, uh, last year. And what the ECOWAS president did say at the launching, uh, which took place in Nigeria, was that the security sector reform governance uh, policy primarily seeks to promote uh, common security standards in the region, like you've just said. Uh, it also aims to you know, complement nationally-led initiatives, and then, thirdly, to promote regional security coordination and cooperation to eff effectively uh, tackle new and emerging security challenges. Uh, it's quite important. You've also talked about these new and emerging uh, security challenges. So uh, we're looking at, number one, um, regional cooperation and then having common standards. Number two, uh, improving what the nation states individually do um, in terms of their, their, their national-led initiatives. And then three, of course, we're looking at, uh, like we said, cooperation. But we're coming from a history where we had what we call ECOMOG. You know, the West African states were able to coordinate themselves effectively to address their uh, security situations as a block and even to even move to other parts of Africa. Um, what do you think has happened to make it necessary for such a um, uh, governance uh, uh, policy to be, you know, raised. You know, with the likes of the United Nations Development Program, uh, we have uh, the Geneva Center for Security Sector Governance, uh, African Security Sector Network, and all that. Is it that there's been some retrogression, or this is just something that's normal as far as um, uh, these multilateral agencies are concerned and how they do their work, especially the UNDP? So. Um, SSR, um, whatever, um, uh, security reforms, um, uh, uh, sector reform and governance, SSRG, it's not, some, it's not new. I think um, from the days of uh, Ban Ki-moon as Secretary General of uh, the UN, that was when um, it, um, it came up on the board. And then which uh, or it should be driven by at um, regional uh, national, regional, and then continent, uh, continental, and then um, uh, global level. And now, what um, UN was um, uh, expecting, it, uh, the expectation is that um, uh, these um, regional organizations should drive it. They should do that because they understand the uh, the uh, dynamics in their in their, in, their, in their area and their peculiarities. And then COAS, what they have done is now trying to domesticate it, bring it um, home as it were. And like I was saying, um, there have been there are mechanisms to do that. What has happened? You ask the question: Why is it that uh, things something has gone? Yes, something has gone wrong. Governance is not political governance; it's not what it should be. And when that happens, it um, uh, impacts on the security. Okay, so when uh, leaders, for instance, do not um, uh, respect uh, human rights, when they tamper with the constitution, remember that in ECOWAS region, three uh, countries are, red, are now under military rule. And then you say, well, and, uh, you know, maybe uh, counted, because others are likely to follow if ECOWAS does not um, step up. So what is the cost? Or what are the causes? I think that is where we should be, what we'll be addressing. The causes are the fact that there has been a breakdown of um, governance. Governance system in West Africa 
has degenerated. It has, um, you know, it's not what it used to be. Uh, uh, nations, you have uh, presidents that are trying now to uh, remain in power, tenure elongation, third term, if you like, and in doing so, they are tampering with the national constitution. They are rigging election, tampering with um, electoral um, laws, and then coming um, oppressing and suppressing opposition and not allowing um, citizens to enjoy um, uh, uh, their human rights and not providing the benefit. Again, we come to you know, the dividends or ben benefits of democracy. You, the, the social system is um, is not what it should be. And uh, there are no education, uh, health, and um, infrastructure. When this breakdown, it also what you call the uh, breakdown of uh, governance system. That is the reason, that, these are the things that give rise to all these, uh, you have agitations, you have um, uh, Boko Haram, you have insurgency, you have a separatist movement because the governance system has collapsed. I think that is what, and then there is the, the you know, deficient, the, you know, deficit of uh, leadership. I think from at the national the regional, and then maybe continental level. These are the uh, drivers and the triggers of um, insecurity. And so uh, if you want to address them, you now have to go back to, you know, the root causes. And once you address the root causes, um, and look at unemployment, for instance. When you have um, uh, uh, an army of uh, youth that are unemployed, um, they are, you know, ready... Uh, uh, subjects to be recruited into um, uh, uh, criminality and that and so on and so forth or uh, you talk about um, uh, 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 separatist movement or the self the call for self-determination these are all we have to go now the uh, governance system has failed yes please we, go ahead uh apology mayor global affairs analysts we have to go now but you know on the other hand i mean the the producers and those behind this, the scene are asking that we move and that's really because we're out of time but I, I was really going to ask if you know the synergy between the au and ECOWAS also uh, has actually helped in any way you know with the fight against insecurity and also with the support uh, you know, that Niger and maybe other, you know, countries within the region are asking for. If you can answer that within a few seconds, it would be great. Okay, I was saying that um, it begins with leadership. If the leadership, both at the national and then the um, regional level, has failed, they cannot now bring, um, uh, uh, you know, these mechanisms to work. So let them work at governance uh, uh, systems. If the governance systems are working, by good leadership, and then things will be will work. Uh, ECOWAS, uh, AU, I think they are not um, uh, doing what they are, what they should be doing, and that is what because of um, the fact that um, leadership has collapsed, and then governance system is um, um, uh, a far cry from what it should be. Thank you so much, uh, Paula Jume, Global Affairs Analyst. We really appreciate your time this morning, and we look forward to sharing Thank your you thoughts for and more. Me. Uh, striking and interesting issues. Thank you. And with that, we come to the end of the, break the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Um, <laughs> it's been an interesting day of conversation. We will be back tomorrow with more interesting discussions and analysis, but also be informed that you can, uh, you know, watch whatever you missed. You just want to have a recap. We have it all on our social media platforms, uh, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, Plus TV Africa. On YouTube, we have two accounts, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle, where you can watch our live streams so right then of course on the internet you can search us out at plustvafrica.com we'll return tomorrow with more my name is kofi bartels and i am messi ebopo many thanks for watching